your family in Jesus. You might get a good night's rest. And if this morning you feel awake and alert and alive again, get into the Word of God with us. If you want to follow this morning, I have a scripture out of 2 Thessalonians uh, chapter 2 from verse 13. So while you're going there, I'd like to tell you a short uh, testimony that I heard many years ago. So there was an elderly couple that were living on a farm uh, somewhere. And on this farm, the old lady had a crop uh, of, I, I can't exactly remember what it was. Let us say it was a crop of tomatoes. Uh, she had half a hectare of tomatoes uh, on the, the right-hand side of the house. And in the, on the left-hand side of the house, on the small farm, the old man had a half a hectare uh, crop of spinach. I, I can't remember what it was. Let's just say tomatoes and spinach. And there was a fence that was separating the two crops. But it was that diamond mesh fence. So you could stand on the one side and you could stick your hand through. It was, you could move through there. Uh, any small rodents or insects or animals could easily move through there. Now, they were, they lived very far from the town where their local church was. And the pastor of the church saw, um, for a few weeks now, it was only the old lady that came to church. And this was a while back, so in those days, the uh, congregation didn't bring their tithes and offerings to the church itself. The pastor would go out and do home visits, and in the home visits, he would collect the tithes and offerings. Almost exactly like what Paul teaches in the Word of God, when he sent out Timothy or of the other apostles or disciples to go and, go and visit the churches, they would then pick up the tithes and offerings uh, for Paul to be able to continue building and growing churches. So the one day, let's say it was a Tuesday, uh, the one Tuesday this pastor gets to the uh, old people's farm, stops at the, the house, gets out of the car and walks to the old lady, where she is busy in uh, her tomato garden, the half hectare tomatoes. And he walked in there and he started talking to her and out of her back pocket she pulled an envelope out and she gave it to the pastor and she said, Pastor, here is my tithes and offerings for this month, but it's also the first fruit of this tomato crop that I have. And the pastor had a look at this tomato crop, and they were beautiful. The tomatoes were blood, blood red. And the leaves um, that were surrounding the tomatoes were grass green. It was a rich green. And, and he was amazed at how beautiful these tomatoes were. So he chatted a little bit with the, the old lady and then asked, where's your husband? So she said, he, he's over there in his garden tending to his crop. So he walked over to the old man and started talking to, to the old man and, and then eventually it came down to the time where he had to ask the, the um, very personal question of, um, look so I'm actually here also to collect the tithes and offering. Uh, when he said that, the old man said to the pastor, I don't go to, to church. I don't need God. I don't need the, the, the church. And, and uh, why does God need my, my money? Um, is he poor? So I'm going to keep my money for myself. Thank you. And in any way, the pastor didn't uh, argue uh, or, or say anything against it. He respected the, the old man's decision. Uh, greeted both of them, got in the car and left. Anyway, the month that followed after that, the pastor went back there to uh, visit again and, and again to collect the tithes offerings and got to the veranda of the house.
house and the old man and the old lady was sitting on the veranda. And as he got out of his car, the old lady jumped up and, and ran and greeted the pastor and again out of her back pocket pulled an envelope and gave it to, to the pastor and said, Pastor, here's my tithes offerings and again it is my first fruit of the second section of my crop that I took off. And he said, do you want to show me? And they went back in there and again it was beautiful. The, the tomatoes were nice and big and blood red ripe and the, the leaves around it were, were green, grass green, a rich, rich green. And, and they were all nicely watered and spaced and, and, and this pastor was just amazed at how beautiful this crop was. But as he looked to the left through the diamond mesh fence that separated the two crops, he could see that the spinach of the man, the husband, the old man was um, was all eaten up by commando worms. So he he turned to the old lady and he said, "Ma'am, what happened there?" And uh, the old lady smiled and she said, "Pastor, I think you know what happened." And she left it at that. And as they were walking back to the house, the pastor noticed that the commando worms that had finished eating at that side of the fence, started moving to the fence, but as they got to the diamond mesh fence, they actually hung on the fence and died right there. That they did not move through the fence to go to the tomato crop. So that night, the pastor went home and he sat and he... he discussed this with the Lord in prayer. He said, Lord, please, you must teach me what happened here. And basically, it came down to a biblical principle. And what the Lord shared with the pastor that night is, is that that old lady honored the word of God by giving her first fruit of the crop, by giving the tithes and the offerings. And the Lord protected her crop. The old man said, I don't want anything to do with the Lord. He doesn't need my money. I won't give him my, my money. And unfortunately, because the old man wasn't adhering to a principle of the word of God and not giving his first fruit, um, the Lord allowed the commando worms only to stay on that side. They weren't permitted to come through the fence to the other side where the tomatoes were. Now if we get into the word of God over here in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 from verse 13. Listen how beautiful the Lord says this. But we ought always to thank God for you, brothers and sisters, loved by the Lord, because God chose you as first fruit to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Spirit and through the belief in the truth. So each one of us sitting in this beautiful church of ours, we have been chosen to be the first fruit. We have been chosen to honor God. Now I know of a family and a brother and sister in Christ that is, is in our congregation, that's in the, the, the family with us here in church, that they, they were blessed with the business and we were here, I think, the second month and they came to us as a family and stood in front of us and said, we want to give you the first fruit. We want to give the church the first fruit of our business. And because of that, that sister in Christ stopped here uh, yesterday and testified about how much the Lord had blessed that business of theirs, the, the months that followed, only purely because they were obedient to the word of God and the voice of the Holy Spirit. They didn't think twice. They came, they took the first fruit of uh, the, the business and they gave it to the church. And they shared it with, the, the, with some of the, the congregation members even. 
And because of that, the obedience towards the word of God, um, they, they have been blessed exceedingly abundantly. They have been blessed so much that our sister testified saying that, you know, the storehouse that we had or have is now too small. We need a bigger storehouse. Praise be to the Lord Jesus. And that's how the Lord works. If we give the Lord our first fruit in everything, the Lord causes a blessing to fall on us that is so big, so huge, that we don't have space to contain it. And then we go out and bless God's people with it. Amen? So what I believe the Lord is sharing with us this morning is that as you are sitting here this morning with the word of God in front of you, brother and sister, mother and father in Jesus, to know that to give God the first fruit of everything, to give him the first fruit of your day. So, which means to me, it's, it's plain and simple, 24 hours in a day to give our father at least two and a half hours, at least two and a half hours, to give him the first fruit, to spend time with the Lord and to give it back to him. Just like if, if the Lord has, has given you um, three children, to give the Lord the first fruit of what he has given you. Myself and my wife, because of what the Lord has taught us, we have dedicated all our children to the Lord. All of them. But it is biblical that the firstborn must be dedicated to the Lord. And, and we did so. And, and we will continue to do so. If the Lord chooses to give us more children, every child that the Lord gives us, whether our own blood or whether adopted children, it, they will be the Lord's. It's the first fruit. So I want to encourage you this morning, as my brother and sister, my, my, my mom and my dad in, in Christ, um, to go and to give the Lord your first fruit. Give it to Him, but purely out of obedience. And see what the Lord is then going to do in your life. Because I can guarantee you, if you do it with a joyful heart and a joyful spirit, like the Lord says in His Word, you will be blessed so much you will not have space to contain it. Amen? And is that not the type of blessing that we are looking for? And that is the, the, the God that we serve. Is He is so big. He is so beautiful. He is so vast. Then he said to Abraham, my son, take your tent pegs and open it as wide as you can. And there where your eye falls, that's what I want to give you. That's how much the Lord bless, blessed uh, Abraham. That's how much he wants to bless you and me. So let us go out in obedience today and tomorrow and the next day and the rest of our lives. And let us give the Lord our first fruit. Amen. I know many of us wake up in the morning and the first thing we do is we grab our phones and, and we check for messages or we, we read news or, or we get onto a computer or we switch a TV or a radio on. Let us try and discipline ourselves to such an extent that we will be disciples that when we wake up in the morning, the first thing we do is we give the first fruit to God. Before touching anything else, before switching anything else on, let's go to our Father and give Him the first fruit. If you go through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you will see that while the disciples were still sleeping, early in the morning, Jesus would rise before the sun came up, and He would, he would hike up a mountain or, or go outside of a, a town or a city to a secluded place, a, a quiet, lonely place, as the Bible says. And Jesus would spend time with his father. Um, he would give the first fruit to his father. And then we can see the result of that first fruit. Because when Jesus then rejoined the disciples every day, he was prepared and he was ready for everything that was coming his way. His father already prepared him for it. Amen. So brother and sister, mother and father in Jesus, um, as this day unfolds, let, let, us, let us attempt 
to discipline ourselves in such a way that we give our first fruit to God. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Father God, for the beauty of who and what you are. We thank you that you have chosen us, Lord. We thank you that we have been set apart and we have been anointed with a calling to, to, to build your kingdom, Father God. Thank you, Father, that if you are for us, who can be against us, Lord? It is a challenge to anybody that stands up against your anointed, Father God. Thank you that you are protecting us. Thank you that you are providing for us. Thank you, Father God, that I live for you and work for you, not for man, Lord. Thank you, Father God, that, 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 that you, Father, provide for me. Man doesn't, Lord. Thank you that you, Father God, bless us. Humans don't bless us, Father God. Thank you, Lord, that if we choose to be obedient to you, Lord, and your word, that there, there, there will be a, a blessing. So big, Lord, that we will not be able to contain it. We love you, Father God, and we pray that in this day, Lord, that we will give our first fruit as tomorrow, as the next day, as the rest of our, 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 our days on this earth. Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I pray, Father God, that the Holy Spirit will stand still in every one of our beautiful church members, Lord. Lord, and that you will bless them exceedingly abundantly. Pray, Father God, if there's anything in our lives that is not of you and that does not bring you glory and that does not build your kingdom, I pray, Father, that the Holy Spirit will remove it out of our lives, Lord. And then there where there's a void place, Holy Spirit, that you will fill it, Lord. And that we will become um, vessels of honor and temples of the Holy Spirit. Bless you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for everything, Lord. We love you and we worship you. We bring you honor, glory, praise, and thanks. And we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Master. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you, family in Jesus. I pray that you will have a blessed day, an awesome day. As you sit right now and you give your first fruit to, to God and you spend time with Him, I pray that spiritually He will bless you. Mentally, He will bless you. Physically, He will bless you. Until we meet again tomorrow, be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.